So first of all, before we, uh, before we start anything, are, th are there any questions from last week? And nothing about Spain, because I wasn't there, so I can't. <laughs> it's lovely to see you both back. Cheers. Praise God. We missed you, but we've had a great time as well. Amen. Just to rub it in as well, you know. Hallelujah. Any questions? No? Oh, that's good, isn't it? Praise the Lord. After all, all I gave you last week and you've not got a question. I either must have done it well or totally confused you and left you wondering, what on earth is he on about? Hey, is that, is that right, Sam? No? Oh. Made, made a little bit of sense, did it? Oh, wonderful. You don't have to be polite. I can take it, you know, I've been insulted before, so. Pardon? Oh, good on you, girl. That's great. Wonderful. Well, as you can see, we're, we've... Pardon? Not yet, no. I've got the sheets. I could give them out. Do you want me to give them out now, the sheets? I don't... But yeah, you can. But I don't, what I don't want you doing is running ahead. All oh, right, fine, okay. I'll give them you afterwards then. You can make your own little notes and then I'll give you the, the, the copy of my notes and then you can go and you have a double dose yeah. and think, what on earth, what are you on about? Hallelujah. As you can see, we, uh, we started preparations um, to get the, the tank ready. It's heated water, so you'll be pleased about that. Yeah, yeah not to... Never mind looking like that, Alex. You know, you just wanted to inflict pain, didn't you? You know, but... You know, It'll be a nice heated pool. And afterwards I can get in and have a bit of a jacuzzi, relax with it as well, you see. <laughs> so, praise God. So we've, we've started that, ready to get it finally clean. I looked actually, and um, it was used two years ago. <clears throat> and I think it was in September then. Yeah, is that right, Ian? Can you remember? Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's like two years since we had a baptismal service, so praise God. It's, uh, it's good to see that things are happening again. And, you know, like, like was I, I said earlier, I just felt God is saying that, you know, that things are being prepared, things are being revealed to come to birth, to bring forth new things. It wasn't anything major, but as we were singing, God said to me, you're entering a new day. Amen. A new day. Hallelujah. Praise God. And that's what we need to be. We're, in that, we're coming into that new day. You know, we've had uh, something like 6,000 years since the, the word of God was written and it, it runs in phases 2,000 years since Christ was crucified it says he, 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 raised, he was raised on the third day hallelujah we're moving into the third day we're moving into resurrection day hallelujah it might not seem like resurrection it might seem a bit dark but I'm telling you this it was dark in the tomb until there was a mighty earthquake, Amen. right? And the angel shook and removed the stone away and revealed, he is risen. Amen. Amen. Come on. And the church needs to realize that he is risen. Yes. Amen. Yes. And that because of his risen life that is abiding in each and every one of us, something is going to happen in this universe. Amen? Yes. Praise God. Yes. So we, you and I, are the people of God. I'll try and stand still, Ian, for you if you want. And Okay, good. You, you're, going to let me be, you're going to let me be loosed and uh, set free. My shackles are gone. Hallelujah. 
my spirit is free, amen, so praise God he lifted me, wonderful Jesus. So as I said last week, to me baptism is a, a very important part of our Christian walk and life and experience and that uh, as I said, you know, I felt that when I was baptized, I was a little bit robbed, um, not fully understanding. So. I am so conscious that we don't pressurize people. You've got to get baptized, but you do it knowing why you're doing it and that you want to do it because we are following the Lord Jesus and the teachings and the practice of the Lord Jesus and obedient to the word of God. But you need to know what you're doing. It's no good following blindly. I don't want a congregation of people that if, when I say jump, they all jump, and nobody says, well, why are we jumping? You, you know what I mean? It's like, I don't want, I don't want nodding dogs. You remember them back at cars you used to, yeah, when cow moving. You know, giving it all this. Don't need that. We need people who will, when we teach the word of God, you listen to it, you take it in, and then you, you actually, you should have your Bible with you, and you're checking you're checking it. And if it's wrong, you've got to come and see me. Yeah? It's right, isn't it, mate? No? Serious. I'm serious about this. No, not you. That's why I didn't pick on you. <coughs> Here's a question. Have you ever been wrong? Oh, all right. <laughs> Oh, praise God. Now, right, let's go into water baptism, shall we? This is the, the second part of the teaching of water baptism. And the first question I ask is, why should I be baptized? It's a good question, isn't it? Why should you be baptized? Why should you be thinking about it? Let's turn to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 3 and verse 11. Gospel of Matthew, chapter 3, and verse 11. And these are the words of John the Baptist. And John the Baptist says, I baptize with water those who turn from their sins and turn to God. So obviously one of the reasons, or part of one of the reasons that we get baptized is because we have turned from our sins. Right? We've done a 180 degree turnaround. Amen. We've made a decision that we're no longer going in that direction that we used to go, which was leading us on the pathway, which, well, not leading us on the pathway, it was the pathway to hell. And a lost eternity. Yeah. And so we've had to take, we've had to stop and be faced up with Jesus and turn around and say, now I'm heading towards the cross, through the cross, Amen. and into the eternity in Christ yeah. Jesus. Okay. Because it's all through the cross yeah. that we move on. And so, John, here, this is before Jesus was on the scene, um, and this is before. Um, Jesus has started his ministry, and it says, John says, I baptize those who turn from their sins and turn to God. He baptized them in water. But someone, he says, is coming soon who is far greater than I am, so much greater that I am not even worthy to be his slave. He will baptize you in the Holy Ghost Sorry, and with fire. Wow. He's prophesying as well. He's prophesying about Acts. Amen? The book of Acts. Right at the beginning when Jesus has gone and resurrected and gone to heaven. And he's, so this word is a prophetic word of the future of what God is going to do. Amen? Amen. Verse 12, he says, He is ready to separate the chaff from the grain with his winnowing fork. Yeah. Then he will clean up the threshing area, storing the grain in his barn 
but burning the chaff with never-ending fire. Obviously, that's speaking of hell, an eternal fire. The chaff is the sinful people, those that have rejected Jesus Christ as Lord and Saviour. And it's, it's so easy for somebody to stick their hand up and say, I want, I, want to, I want Jesus in my life. But then the next thing you have to do is to take hold of the hand of Jesus and begin to walk in the same direction that Jesus is walking. You have to leave the old life. You have to separate yourself from the old life. You have to cut yourself off from the old life because otherwise you'll just be torn in two. You have to separate yourself. You can only go in one direction. Have you noticed that? Yeah. Have you ever tried going in two directions at once? I have occasionally. You get nowhere. You just end up doing this. You just, you know, pointless exercise. You have to decide. There's a, there's that, there is a song in there, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back, no turning back. And so often we get tempted to turn back. Well, at my age, I've come too far to turn back. I don't have enough energy to go back all back the other way. You know, my destiny is onwards and forwards and upwards in Christ Jesus. Because I don't want to go back. Because what is behind me has nothing to offer me. I've seen it all and I don't want it at all. You know, and... I just want what's in front because Amen. I know, I know what's in front. I've seen, I'm going to say this, I've seen some of what's in front of us yeah. and I want it. Amen. I want it more than I ever want what's behind me. Yeah. So that's where I'm at. And so sometimes as you see, I'm a bit passionate and a bit, you know, over the top and, and going for it. You see, at my age, they tell me I should be slowing down. At my age, I should be taking a back seat. And, but I've still got a fire. And I just, you know, I just, my turbos are still running. Oh, man. Amen. Oh, man. You know, I've got all, I've got all my faculties and all my, all my rings and my pistons are working. So, you know, it's glory to, you know, engineers understand what I'm talking about. You know? I'm, I'm just, I'm ready. I've still got, you know, the, cylind the cylinders have still got full compression. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm like, oh, yeah, just, just, oh, come on, let's do it. Hallelujah. But don't get in my way because, you know, brakes don't work too well because I don't need brakes because I'm just going forward, you see. Don't need the brakes. Just keep going forward for Jesus. I'm glad to we're on that, aren't you? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Okay. A never-ending fire. The baptism of Jesus, verse 13. Then Jesus went from Galilee to the Jordan. So this is when Jesus was baptized. So now what we're going to do? We're going to look at Jesus. What did Jesus do? Do you remember that? There used to be that four letters. What, what would Jesus do? Well, we're going to see what Jesus did. In verse 13. Then Jesus went from Galilee to the Jordan River to be baptized by John. But John didn't want to baptize him because John knew who he was. Nobody else did, but John did. Jesus and John had met before they were born. That's got you thinking, hasn't it? They'd, and it's like, it's impossible. What did you say? It's impossible. Yes, they were cousins. Yeah. But you see, when, when John was in the womb of Elizabeth, Elizabeth, not you, praise God, otherwise you'd be very old. And Jesus was in the womb of Mary. When they met one another to announce what was happening to them, it says when Mary turned up to greet Elizabeth, it says the babe, John, leapt in the womb. Amen. He leapt. What did he leap about? He leapt because his saviour, the Christ. How did he know? Hey, you know, they talk, 
I know this is off pat, but uh, oh, glory to God. I'm going to struggle tonight. I really am. You know, there, there are aborting babies. And saying, you know, oh, that, you know we're going to abort, abort them right up to even to birth. This new government that we've got. And yet, when John the Baptist was in the womb at six months old, he knew that his saviour was there. Amen? So that's how much a baby knows when it's in the womb. Right? It's a baby. It's a living being that is relying upon the mother to sustain it, to bring it to full term and then bring it to birth and then it still relies on the mother. So don't, you know, don't try and tell me it's okay because it ain't okay. That's off part. Sorry about that. Anyway, praise God. It's murder. It's murder. And John the Baptist leapt in his mother's womb. So he'd met Jesus some years ago. So John, when he sees Jesus, said, John said, he didn't want to baptize him. And John says, I am the one who needs to be baptized by you, Jesus. He said, so why are you coming to me? But Jesus said, it must be done because we must do everything that is right. Wow. Amen. Amen. You know, I, I think if, if you and I took those few, ver few words and put them on the mirror for every morning to look at, things might change, eh? He said, it must be done because we must do everything that is right. Amen. We've got to do it right. And that's why I take time on baptism. We've got to do it right. Because I want you to get the best of all of this. So then John baptized him. After his baptism, as Jesus came up out of the water, the heavens were opened and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and settled upon Jesus. And a voice from heaven said, This is Amen. my beloved Son, Amen. and I am fully pleased with him. Yes. Wow. Wow. Great, wasn't it, if we heard a voice when you came up out of the water? in these next few days when we baptize you. Okay? The Holy Spirit comes down upon you in a great way, Amen. a powerful way. Amen. You need to be praying towards this end now. Lord, I want to be filled with you. I want to experience your presence Amen. in a fresh and new way in my life. And it's nothing to be afraid of, by the way. Some people get afraid of these things and think, oh, I'll be out of control. I'll tell you what, the best thing you can be is out of control with God. Amen. Hallelujah. Because, you know, most of us, if we, when we're in control, we make a mess of things. Yeah, we do. So be out of control with Jesus. Let him take the driving seat. Let him direct you and, and fill you and lead you and fill you to the fullness of the blessings of God. Hallelujah. When Jesus was born... He was called the Son of Man. After his baptism, he is now called the Son of God. There's a change. There's an impact with baptism. And so baptism, you know, if it was important to Jesus, it is also has to be important to us that we are baptized in the fullness of the things of God. <clears throat> Spiritually, he's fully released into the things of the kingdom of God. That's what happened with Jesus. At his baptism, he's fully released into the things of God. The things of God suddenly become more available. You know, for 33 years, really nobody knew who Jesus was apart from that he's the carpenter's son. You know, Joseph's son, he's a carpenter. He mended me table last week, you know, made me some chairs and, that's who Jesus was for 
30 some years and then suddenly he's called the calling comes down upon him it's time it's time it's your time it's my time for God to begin to move I know when God called me and I was praying about it and I said what's next Lord and he says it's my time now You know, I, I'd had dreams and of things I wanted and things I wanted to do. And you know, when I got to 33 and a third, I'd ticked them all off. They were all, they were all ticked off what I wanted. And I just said to the Lord, I said, look, I've, well, everything that I've really desired, I, I, I've, they're all ticked off, they're done. So what's next, Lord? And he just said to me, came back straight away, just like that, said, it's my time now. Amen. And I went, well, okay. And within a few years, not many years, was it? I was out full time, honoring the Lord and just doing what he wanted me to do. And I'm still at it at 74 years old. I'm still doing it. Ain't no retirement, just new tires. Keep going in for a new, new ones fitting, you know. These are getting a bit worn out, Lord. Have you got some new ones? Yeah, I've got some good Michelin X's here sort of thing, you know, getting fitted on. Glory to Jesus. So here we are. And so Jesus, when he was born, he was called the Son of Man. After he was baptized, he was called the Son of God. Spiritually, he was released into a fullness of the things of the kingdom. From this point on, it's the beginning of signs, wonders, and miracles. Amen. That's what happened at baptism. That's what happened after it, because then we, we know he went into the wilderness. And he went into the wilderness to be filled with the power of the Spirit. So, baptism is not the end. Baptism is the beginning. Amen? It's the beginning of that new life in Christ. It's the beginning of a, a new infilling and a fresh anointing and a growing in God that should be so important to us because God's got a work for you to do. Amen. And you might think, who me? I'm nobody, I'm only you, you know. You might think, well, I'm not very smart. You don't need to be smart. You need to be in touch with the one who is the smartest person in the universe. And he says, I will reveal to you things that you never knew. Amen. Wow. He'll speak through you. He'll, speak, he'll use you to speak things that you don't even know what, anything about. It's incredible. Because the Holy Ghost will be in you. And this is the power of water baptism that allows us to move on into greater things in God. Amen. And so we need to do this. And, you know, Jesus said, this thing needs to be done so that all the fullness all the righteousness needs to be fulfilled. For us, it's a new meeting with God. It's a new way of meeting with God. It's a new dimension of empowering that God has for you and for me. You see? He wants to take, continue to take you to another level. And what he's saying to us is, come up higher. Yeah. Come up higher. Yeah. Come on. Stop sitting where you're sitting and come up higher Amen. in me. Stop Amen. being content with what you've got, Amen. but begin to be hungry and thirsting for more of God and come up higher. Amen. And that's what we need to do. Acts chapter 8. Turn with me to Acts chapter 8, if you would, please. And verse 36, verse 36, and this is the story of Philip and the, the eunuch who uh, was reading Isaiah. I think I was preaching about some of this the other week, weren't I? Yeah, it's all running together, isn't it? And uh, 36, I said, and as they went along the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, look, 
water. What prevents me from being baptized? Good question. And Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, not half-heartedly, not, you know, some people go, I want Jesus in my life. Really? You know? Well, are you going to, you know, the word says we're to confess Jesus as our Lord and Savior to others. So many people are afraid to do this. And he says, if you don't confess me before others, then I don't confess you before my heavenly Father. Wow. But he wants you to confess. And so here Philip repeats this to him. He says, if you believe with all your heart. In other words, the Christian life is not a half-hearted no. existence. No. There's somebody here today who's going to be baptized, who's been a Christian for a good number of years and has been in a, a different type of fellowship. And for her, it's been a half-hearted experience. But since she came here to Harvest Fields, there's been a turnaround Amen. in this half-heartedness. And it's, I think she said to me one time, it's like a breath of fresh air. And that's what we need. We need the fresh air of heaven to be breathed into us that gives us life and sustains us. And so, Philip is saying, you have to do this with all of your heart. Not half-hearted. Not say, well, I'll, I'll do it to please my mum. Don't do it to please your mum, please. You know? If you feel like saying, I need, an, I need another few months before I'm going to do it. Do not do it to please your mother or your father or anybody else, only you. Right? You do it for you. Not to do with anybody else. Right? Nothing to do with anybody else. It's you and Jesus. It's you and God. It's you and the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Nobody else. If there were nobody here when you got baptized, it didn't matter as long as God's here. Right? That's what, can, you, can you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. It's about you. Right? It's about you, Laura. Nobody else. And God looks and says, it's about you, love. My son died for you. And if it was only you that was a sinner, he still would have died for you. That's powerful. That's powerful. And in fact, the amazing thing is that Sam, before you were born, before you were even thought about, or God knew you. That's what it says in scripture. Wow. When I, when I read that, and I've been a Christian a few years, it blew me away. I'm like, whoa. That is amazing. That God knew me before I was even an embryo in my mother's womb. And you think, how does that work? You're chosen, that's right, we can't comprehend it. This, this mind don't, it's just got fried, hasn't it, you know. So it's important. So God wants to meet you in a new dimension, in a new way to empower you. It's an empowering act, isn't it? Hey, glory to God, it is. And so Philip speaks to this eunuch. And then they stop the chariot, it says, and they both get down into the water. Philip as well as the eunuch, and he baptizes him. And when they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. I mean, can you imagine that? You know, you've just been baptized. This guy's turned up. You've, he's listened to you reading Isaiah. And then he says, yeah, I'll baptize you. He baptizes him and you're just coming out at water, you know, and you're like, oh, what, a, what, a, what an experience, Philip. And oh, Is he still in or what? Yeah. He's gone. 
I'm not exaggerating it. That's what the Bible says. He was caught up. God took him somewhere else in the twinkling of an eye. He's somewhere else in Israel. Whoa. It's true. The word of God don't exaggerate. It's truth. I told you, I think I told you last week that the early church gave new names to, to many of the believers because they had pagan names. And so they didn't want to have pagan names. You know, they didn't want to be named after a, a god or a goddess. And so they had their names changed. And that's why the term comes Christian name. You see, that's why it's a Christian name. And so people, even some people, even in, in today's time, have had their name changed because their other name was, to them, was an ungodly name. It was a name that brought them great trauma from the past. And so they wanted a name change. And so they've had their name changed so that they can baptize as a new creature, new creation. Yeah, in the Old Testament there was a guy called Jabez and the meaning was pain. Can you imagine? Pain, come here. I mean, why would you name your child pain? You know, the meaning of his name is pain. So you, you stand there and you're shouting for him to come in. Pain, come in. You're thinking, really? You've got to be joking, haven't you? Yeah. Mother, you should have thought of that one. So... This is why, you know, as I say, people have changed their names historically. Because the, the, many of the Old Testament people were given, and bear in mind there were people getting saved all around the, that area, and there was a lot, most of that area was worshipping pagan gods yeah. and goddesses. And so they were given names that were within that environment. And so when it came to the the baptism as they were baptizing people in Corinth and Ephesus and all these places, they were giving them a new name. Amen. Hallelujah, a new name. And I explained to you, I think, last week about, the, or did I? I did. About the white stone, didn't I? The Bedellium stone. And you can read that again. The information is in uh, Genesis chapter 2 and verse 12. Um, it's in there. And that how we know what color it was, etc. So God has given to, wants to give you a new name, a name that the devil doesn't know. Spiritually, God gives us a new name. Amen? Yeah. And the devil don't know your name. So when he starts calling you, you know, when he starts calling Liz, come on, Liz, come on, Liz. It's like, she's dead. She's dead. Come on, Mick. No, he's dead. I'm a new creature Amen. with a new feature. Amen. I'm a new creature with a new destiny Amen. and a new purpose in life. Yeah. You know, for me to live is Christ, Paul says, to die is gain. Amen. Amen. You know, it's none of this, oh, pity me, you know, if I die. No, he says, for me to live is Christ, and if I've got to die, it'll be gain anyway. So I'm in a win win situation. Amen. 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 And so that's what we believe and stand on. Um, Revelation. Uh, Revelation chapter 2 and verse 17. Revelation 2 and verse 17. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. When we go through baptism and we start this journey and this commitment to Christ, our spiritual ears should be being opened. Amen. And here, John, here the, in, in this where uh, John speaks, he says, let him that hath ears to hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. What is the Spirit of God saying to the churches? We need to be hearing God's voice. We need to be hearing the Spirit of God so that we know and that we're ready, that we're already prepared before the enemy even gets anywhere near us. Yeah. Remember the Old Testament? was the Old Testament prophet who would tell the king, oh, this is what such and such a king's going to do, and this is going to come up this way to us in battle. And every time they were ready for him, and they ambushed them. And he's like, how's this happening? 
We've a spy in the camp. Yeah, you have. You've got the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. He hears all things. God knows what is going on. And we need, yeah, we need to hear ourselves from heaven what God is saying about situations and circumstances. Because God is not going to be silent, let me tell you. He's not silent in these things. <clears throat> Revelation 2.17 And to him who overcomes, to him I will give some of the hidden manna, and I will give him a white stone and a new name written on the stone, which no one knows but he who receives it. Wow. Hidden manna, sustenance, sustenance. What is it? I don't know. Oh, take and see that the Lord is good. That sustenance that comes in a spiritual dimension, in a spiritual way, that sustains you, that takes you on, that keeps you going beyond food, beyond sleep. It takes you on and strength. Amen? Praise God. There's a new birth. There's a new nature. It's deliverance from the old. Death to the old man. We're going to bury you. We're going to bury you in there. That's what we're going to do. It's, a, it's an act of actually putting to death the old man. Full immersion. Yes. Total. Don't struggle when we put you down. We will bring you back. Hallelujah. We believe in raising the dead. <laughs> Glory to God. We believe in raising the dead. There's one here that's been raised from the dead, so you know we believe in it. We've seen it till so, you know. We can do it with baptism. We're going to put you in there. We're going, to, we're going to put you to death, the old man to death, and we're going to bring to life the new man in Christ Amen. Jesus in you. Amen. Are you excited about that? Yeah. Okay. And so God's going to do this. Do it in you. And remember this. Satan has no creative power. Get that into your skulls. Satan has no creative power. Therefore, he's not able to bring the old man back to life. <laughs> Think about it for a minute. You were buried in Christ. You were raised in Christ, a new creator. The old man is buried and Satan does not have the power or the ability to breathe life into the corpse. Nope. Amen? Amen? Come on. Yeah. Amen. So when, it, you know, when, when Satan drags the corpse up and stands behind it and waggles its arms and says, look, this is you, you know, and starts to draw, try and draw you back, the only time Satan has any power is what you and I surrender to him. So we have a responsibility to keep what we've got to use for the kingdom of light, for God's kingdom. And Satan, you just got to remind yourself, Satan, you have no power. Oh, and by the way, Andrew Golber's dead. Wow. Didn't know that. He's dead, all right. He's got to die. Might be a time on a morning when he thinks he's going to get up and you think, oh no, you ain't getting up this morning. You're dead. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. No more in condemnation. Here by the grace of God I stand. And these are the things that you have to get. Sometimes you have to remind yourself. Because Jesus gave you power and authority. So we must not surrender our power and authority to the devil. You know, the children of Israel went through water baptism when they came through the Red Sea. 
It's symbolic of water baptism. Two million people or so traveled through. Oh, and by the way, the animals came with them. That's an interesting one, isn't it, for you to think about. The animals were baptized. Sanctified. I'm going to put the dog in, shall I? Hallelujah. <laughs> now, wait a minute. You know, the, the animals are God's creation. We were given the responsibility to take care of them. Is that right? Yeah. Is that what, what Scripture said? Did not Adam, were they not brought to Adam for him to name them? Hmm? Adam was told to rule and to reign over. Right, he didn't, did he? But anyway, that's another story, but we'll leave that one for now. All of creation. Yeah, all of creation, yeah, the word of God says, all of creation longs for the return, for its redemption. In other words, its restoration back to what was created in the beginning. Amen. Amen? Hallelujah. Oh, do you know, I've got, I've got goosebumps for a minute, you know. Ah, oh, if that started to happen, praise God. Oh, wonderful Jesus. Our baptism is you and I setting out as a new man on his way in the promised land. Amen? Believe it or not, you and I should be living in the realms of the promised land now. And it's coming more and more into its fullness as we walk with him. We started the journey for the promised land. And God is your provider, both naturally and supernaturally. And, that, and Grace and I can testify to that. Financially, we've seen God do miracles for us. I don't know how we survive, what we, how we survive when I finish work and paid the mortgage still at 17.5%, by the way. <laughs> and yet God was there. And provided for us in such a wonderful way. And I just said, thank you, Lord. Because God told me he was going to keep me and grace in the, that that we were accustomed to. And even greater. And I went, wow, how's he going to do that? I, got, I did maths in my degree, etc. And I've got a calculator. I've got some red writing on here. And that's what my bank statement were going to look like. Not good. But do you know something? In all that time, it never ever went red. Yeah. Never ever missed a mortgage payment. Because we trusted in the living word of God Almighty. And this living word is what we trust in. And so God has made provision for you. Laura... God has made provision for you, Amen. right? It's not to do with anybody else. God has made provision for you. He's made provision for each and every one of us. And we need to realize that God is at work doing great things. And what we've got to start doing is believing God Amen. and trusting God. Yeah, but, don't give me a but because you're a goat and you should be sheep. Goats do all the butting and tupping. Your sheep, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me, he says. Right? So if he said it, follow it. Yeah, but what happens if? Oh, my Lord, give up. You're negating it. Stop using the words of power that are being given to you, the creative words of power. Stop using them to negate what God is saying. Yeah, Rough topic, aren't we? Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 13. For by one spirit are you baptized into one body, whether you be Jew, Gentile, 
whether you be bond, free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. There's no color. There's no nation. Just one Lord, one Savior, one salvation, one nation unto God. Amen. I don't care whether you're Polish, half Polish. I don't care whether you're, your wife's from Zam Zambia, what is it? Uh, Zimbabwe. I don't care where, where you're from. I don't care if you're from a, a gypsy background. I don't care. Amen. It, it's, it's one body. You see, it's one body. It's one Christ. And you can't have a divided body. And, and so, but what has got to happen is we've all got to come together in that one body. Amen. And stop saying, well, I'm so-and-so and I'm so No, you're not. I don't care what it says on your passport. It's one body. I'm a he you're heavenites in Christ Jesus and you've got to come into that oneness. And that baptism is bringing you through into a oneness in Christ. Hallelujah. Praise his wonderful name. Baptism is the believer's union with Christ and the covenant with Christ. See, Christ has made a covenant with you. Galatians chapter 3 and 26. Galatians 3 and verse 26. For you are all, you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. Did you hear that? You are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. Can't be anything else. For as many of you as been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. We're putting on Christ. When you get baptized, you're putting on Christ. You're coming up wearing Christ. Amen. You're covered in Christ. Amen? Yeah. I don't, you might say, well, how does that happen? I don't know. Ask God. It's spiritual. That this, it's, you see, you are not, I've done it again, you are not just a physical body. You are a spiritual entity. Right? You're a spiritual being. You're not just flesh and bones. You're spirit. You're spirit. Amen? Amen. Colossians 2 and verse 11. Colossians 2 verse 11. In whom also you are circumcised with a circumcision made without hands. In putting off the body of sin of the flesh by circumcision of Christ. Being buried in baptism in which you were also raised with him through faith in the working of God who raised him, Jesus, from the dead. Amen? Amen. That's Colossians 2, 11 and 12. Colossians 2, 11 and 12. Jesus was three days in a borrowed tomb. He didn't need one. He had to borrow one. Yeah. Can you imagine Joseph of Arimathea who loaned him the tomb and somebody said to him, what, what, what's crap with you? There's this guy that they've nailed to a cross. Everybody's rejected him and, and you know, had him for blasphemy and all sorts of things. And you've given him your tomb. To bury him in. Now Joseph of Arimathea was a believer. Can you imagine he'd turn around and say, well he only needs it for a weekend. <laughs> <laughs> he only needs it for a weekend. <laughs> well he did. You know, he could have it back after that on Monday. And if he wants it for later, he can have it. It's his, you know, but. He's risen. He's ascended and glorified. Baptism is a sign and a seal of that virtual union with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The removal of a believer's sins through Christ's death and resurrection. Baptism is an act 
which symbolizes the removal of the penalty of sin through the blood of Jesus Christ and the resurrection into eternal life. Wow. Okay. Baptism is an act which symbolizes the removal of the penalty of sins through the blood of Jesus Christ and the resurrection into eternal life. Amen. That's what it's about. Amen. Isn't it, Sheila? Eh? It's amazing. I, I, just, I just love this, actually. I'm just so excited about it. Praise God. Romans chapter 6 and verses 3 to 6 speaks there that... Uh, do you not know that as many of us are, that as were baptized into Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore we were buried with him through the baptism into death that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. Amen. For in, if we had been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we are also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that the old man was crucified, that the body of sin might be done away with, that should be no longer a slave to sin. Praise God. You'll be glad you've got notes. You can go through this and, and just have another refreshing of this. Romans 6, verses 3 through to 6. The believer's identification with Christ in the power and the reality of his resurrection life. That's what it's about. The believer's identification with Christ in the power and reality of his resurrection life. We're living through the resurrection life of Christ. Amen. Amen. The Lordship of Jesus Christ in every believer. That's what we are looking at. The Lordship of Jesus Christ in every believer. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 27. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 27 says, For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Praise God. When you came out of that water, those of you that have been baptized, you came up putting on Christ. When you came up out of that water, you came up and the devil went, oh no, another Jesus has just got up. It's true. You came up in the power and the authority of Jesus Christ. You came up in the image of Christ. Christ in me and I in Christ. So you came up looking like Jesus. When the devil looks at you, he sees Jesus and he thinks, oh no, another one. I've got to face and fight another one. Hallelujah. Amen. He might think he's winning at the moment, but oh, oh glory to God. Things are changing. Seeking to be like Christ, to follow in his footsteps, to fulfill the great commission of Christ in Mark's Gospel chapter 16 verses 15 and 16. You can read that later yourself. But we are to fulfill the great commission in Christ. We're to follow in the footsteps of Jesus. Jesus, the things that he said to his disciples right at the beginning was what? No, right at the beginning. He said, no, thank you. He said, follow me. And I will make you fishers of men. Amen. That's all he offered. He said, follow me. And the principle is doing that, following Jesus. Not following a, a ministry, not following somebody else, not following yourself even. Follow Jesus. Follow me, he said. And we follow him. 
and as we follow him and are obedient to the words that Jesus gave to us, then we'll see God moving in power in our lives. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 1 through to verse 4. Colossians chapter 3, 1 through to 4. If then you were raised in Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Oh, verse 2. Set your mind on things above. Get out, get out of this, this natural world. Get out of this natural sense world. And set your mind on things above. Not on the things of the earth, Paul says. For you died. And your life is hid with Christ in God. Wow. So not only are you in Christ. But Christ is in God. So that means that you are now in God. Amen. Wow. You know, they missed it, didn't they? They forgot to tell us a lot of things. They forgot to bring us, show us the importance and the power that is in this word and in baptism. Verse 3, for you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ who is, our, who is our life appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. That's the destiny. That's the hope. Yeah. That's what we've got. That's the assurity Amen. that we shall appear with him in glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, makes you want to dance. Makes you want to shout. I'm going to be Jesus in glory because it says so. I read it. It's in the book. And then Matthew 28, chapter 28, verse 19. And finally with this. When all that's happened to you, go ye, therefore, and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And that is exactly what we do. We baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. You get the full trinity. Hallelujah. A three chord cannot be easily broken. Hallelujah. And God is for us and no one can beat us because God is in our lives forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So these next, we've probably got a couple of weeks before it is baptismal day. If you have any questions, either write them down, come and chat. The door's open. We want you to be blessed. We want you to have a great time. Um, you all know Louise. Bless her. She was terrified of water. So baptism to her was major. And here she is. Photograph of Louise. She brought this in so you could see being baptized. Hallelujah. And she came up and she's been a different person ever since. Amen. And so we should be doing similar baptismal certificates to this as well. So, praise God. Um, that's it for tonight. I hope you've been encouraged. I hope you've been blessed. I hope you've understood. And before you go, come and collect the last two pages of the notes uh, so you can take them home and you can read them to your heart's content and rejoice. Amen. Lord bless you.